Here's your first look at Microsoft Loop. The answer is yes. I do sound disappointed in this video. Why do I sound disappointed? I sound disappointed because I can't make fun of the fact that it doesn't exist anymore. About a year and a half after Microsoft Loop finally announced that their software was gonna be the next revolutionary Canvas productivity app, they have something that we can actually use. If you go to Microsoft Loop, you can get started by clicking on get started with loop. And once you authenticate and go into your Microsoft account, you're able to go into loop preview if you have a personal account or business account, and we can kind of play in the parameters of this public preview and show you all the different ways that it could be similar to other apps like Notion. I must admit when looking at this application, it does look a little too Notion-esque for me when clicking on an icon, you do have the ability to use emojis and unlike Notion, which I couldn't say previously, it is behind in the sense that it can't pick icons. It can only use emojis. I will say the theme of these emojis seem pretty unique and, and I haven't really seen anything like this before. On the top right of every page, you can copy as a loop component. And then you also have the ability to share the workspace, the link to the page directly, or the loop component. So that would basically mean that in the loop component, you can embed it into and provide access to this page and supported Microsoft 365 apps. If you're interested in a more in-depth breakdown of this, I actually would be considering getting a Microsoft Business Edition for myself to review this further. Now, a really nice thing that this does have out of the gate is the ability to go and click here for version history as well, which many applications you know, usually have to pay for. So I know it's on a public preview, but that's a pretty nice feature to have. Microsoft does some 200, 300, I don't even know, plus billion dollar company. So you'd assume they'd have something. And then similar to Notion, you're also able to update this cover to something random or select anything here. It does not seem like there's any sort of search function. And uh, I don't really like the fact that I can't seem to upload anything to this, but it is what it is, I guess. You also notice a nice little feature right here at the top, which indicates who has this file open. So it's me at the moment. If there was other people in the workspace, that would be the case too. Here on the top left, you're able to close this sidebar and engage with the page like this, similar to what you can do in Notion. And one of the most interesting parts about this public preview is if you press the three dots and go to settings, you're also able to obviously toggle between system, light and dark mode, like any good application would, but you're also able to go to experiments and then there's Copilot here. So it's currently at capacity and as it's in high demand, but if I had pressed this earlier, I would have maybe had the Copilot or ChatGPT straight integrated into Microsoft Loop, which is gonna make things really interesting. And this could even be why it's taken so long for Microsoft Loop to come out. Maybe they had this vision on their roadmap. I'm not gonna give them that much credit, but we don't know. And very similar to the way that Notion works, it seems like I could do markdown functionalities. And what I'm noticing on the top left here is that there is a multiple level factor in here and how essentially right here I'm in this page and it sort of has the breadcrumb style. So I'm wondering if I take this page and drop it in there. Yep, if I drop get inspired in there, it doesn't seem to show up anywhere on this page, but what it does do is it does in this format on the top left, then give you the option to move through these just like the breadcrumbs would in a Notion workspace. Similar to this navigation, it then got me to wonder whether it would have the same copy link capabilities or copy as loop component capabilities that would make this interesting from a navigation standpoint. So if I copy page link here, you'll see that you have these similar options to Microsoft 365, whether you have anyone with the link can edit or anyone with the link can just view the pages. And you can also set a password and end date to all of these things. So if I copy this link and go to another page here, it does seem that unfortunately, if I paste this out, it just gives me this interesting bookmark style. Now, that's a little eerie to looking just like Notion. I mean, it's, it's kind of too close for comfort in my opinion. What you can do, it seems like though, is for example, if I type get started and then hyperlink it by pressing the three dots here, press link and then paste it in there. It does seem like it hyperlinks it but an issue that you run into is that I can't even like just baseline click on it. I'm having to hold down control and then it opens it up in another page. And that is a little bit eh, for me. Like I'm not really a fan of the fact that you can't literally just click on links yet. I get it's new. It seems like it's a bit of a bug. And while I can appreciate that there's right clicking right now and right away, that's just not that good for me. Like, come on, Microsoft, you can't, I can't click on a link. I don't know, what are we doing here? 
It does have a very similar functionality where you can do control K and it will open up the hyperlink. So it does have some of the baseline shortcuts that it's, that Notion seems to have. And you'll notice with this as well, it's similar to that block type of functionality. And if I right click on this, I can change the text color, very similar to things in Notion, change from H1 to H2, H3. And I can also create a loop component. So now what happens when you create a loop component is that it almost becomes what seems to be like a synced integration. So uh, a synced block. So if I type this right here and then go to the get inspired page and then we paste this in here, what's interesting is if I then click in there, if I copy this component and then go into the get inspired page and then paste this into this other page, You'll notice that if I just randomly type and go back to the welcome page, that it seems like this is essentially a synced block, but it does have the ability to change the access of whoever's in it by clicking here. And you're also able to look at the different shared locations right here, similar to what you can do with sync blocks in Notion. The rest of just looking at this Microsoft Loop application it's essentially just looking at something that has no databases, but almost looks like what Notion was prior to Notion 2.0, where it's essentially a markdown functionality, where if you press backslash, it brings up this prompt and you have the ability to look at all these different things. They do have some interesting templates to choose from, which we'll get into in a moment, but I really just wanna point out the fact that it does not have databases. It does seem to have the similar thing as sync blocks. So it's almost like you took Notion prior to 2.0, added sync blocks, add some functionality to it that maybe you didn't have. And you just have the exact same keybinds as well. I mean, we press the colon icon here and it brings up an emoji option, which essentially just takes the emojis from the top here and lets you work through them. Like red circle is always one that I, I do. So like red circle and then boom. Kind of, it's a little disappointing how, I mean, like, I, I like that it's the continuities there and I can do a slash or I can use actual literal markdown and do a pound sign and then space and then it's an H1. However, eh, you know, a little, we called it a Notion clone before it even came out and now it literally just looks like a Notion clone prior to 2.0. I don't know how to say it any nicer than that. Microsoft, you totally ripped this thing off. It's it's not original whatsoever and I'm a little bit annoyed by it. I'm gonna keep it frank. I'm trying to find some unique things here, but I'm just having a hard time doing it. If I go to the add page here, we can either add a new link or add a new page. The new link thing is interesting. So say for example, we wanna have a bookmark in here so let's do rise productive HTTPS riseproductive.com and then we can put my website and add. I will appreciate that this is an original thing. I click on this, it's a hyperlink. That is interesting, that is original, but that's the first thing I found and I've been recording for 15 minutes. In here, seems to be a bit of a bug where it keeps showing the three dots here and it says more page options which is interesting because when you think about it, it's not really a page, it's a link. So that's just maybe a UI UX bug. If I press new sub page, you are able to have sub pages for under the made items here. And on the bottom, we have a bunch of different templates we could choose from. So if I press explore other templates, I am starting to get a little frustrated with like how they even ripped off some of the baseline templates, meeting notes, product wiki, like these are original, the action here, so I'll give them some credit, but it's like, let's let's open this action items one, okay? Interesting emojis, cool looking cover. The page spacing is a little too much for me, I will admit. Does not seem like if I press update cover, this is working and we have a bit of a bug here. So let's refresh. And I'm not trying to just rip on Microsoft for this, but when you blatantly copy other apps, it's like, how can I not? And I get it, it's new, but this is clearly bugging as I'm trying to say this. So let's look at what, this loop component is. It's essentially a table. So if we were to work in a slash table, we'll see this is exactly what the baseline is and this is an example they have. They do seem to have some different properties like a status one here. And we can check out those different properties by looking at the little drop down caret right here. So column types are text, number, date, person, voting, and then label. Now label does have the ability to have progress and priority. So what does that mean? That means you're able to add different options. So let's do a test. So you are able to add different options. It's not limited to the default ones there. And if we then move into another one, which would be progress, does seem like you're able to add them as well. It's just a preset 
of defined ones that you can then tweak. You're able to rename this from priority or progress. So essentially it's just a label column that you can then tweak and it has some baselines there. Working on writing some example test here, we'll see that it does have the ability to type under and if I press shift enter, it will go down and have multiple lines, but it does Interestingly enough, what it does have that Notion doesn't have is the ability to do rich text editing within it. So I can actually put a pound sign and then space and it will make this a header. And I can even do backslash functionality within here. So I could make a little bulleted list within here. So I am appreciative of this and this is something that it's doing better than Notion and I'll give it full credit, similar to what Coda can do with its text properties. So kudos to that. And then in the owner section, this essentially assigns it to people's Outlook accounts, similar to what can be done if you're working in the text functionality. So if I go right here and do slash, you'll see that you can either at people and click on this, or if you just do slash again, there is a date option, an emoji picker, labels within it, and you can obviously embed media that you can upload within here, which is solid. And then from this standpoint, we are able to expand and collapse this table as well as sort it in different ways. So it's like baby database functionality. Doesn't seem to be any search capabilities. You're able to hide different columns at times, which I appreciate. However, I am just struggling here. I'm struggling because while I really do want this to be something new and original, I am finding minimal things that are original and I'm finding a lot of things that are knockoffs. And I'm just frustrated because this was announced so long ago and it is essentially Notion 1.5 plus sync blocks. If I'm being too harsh, let me know, but I'm gonna spam this update cover button 12 times before it actually works. And then when I remove it, we can finally see that it does have the ability to not have a cover on top, which does improve the spacing and I can't appreciate that. What are your thoughts on Microsoft Loop? Let me know in the comment section down below and let me know what your thoughts on this video on how to improve your productivity even more.